Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. It's time to take a look at all the news and features from USA Wrestling, the national governing body of our sport. Well, it's going to be a busy couple of weeks at the OTC in the springs as the national team camps get underway. All three styles will be in competition. These camps help to prepare the athletes for upcoming events here in the U.S. and abroad, including the all-important Jack Pinno Cup in Greco and the Dave Schultz Memorial. They'll feature all three Olympic styles as well. A large number of wrestlers are gearing up for competition overseas. USA Wrestling's Craig Sesker and Richard Emmel were able to attend a, a day of men's freestyle training and spend some time with some of the top stars. Olympic and world champ Jordan Burroughs is back on the mats getting ready for another season ahead. He's coming off an incredible year that was headlined, of course, by a gold medal at the Worlds in Budapest, Hungary. Jordan? Yeah, man, last time I was here, I broke my ankle. It wasn't a good <laughs> training camp for me last time, but I'm happy to be back now feeling healthy and uh, ready to go gear for the new year. Uh, so if I'm going out there shooting doubles, shooting low singles, and going out there and wrestle as hard as I can, it's going to provide for some good entertainment, a good show, and maybe bring some more fans to wrestling. Olympic champ Jake Varner, who trains and coaches at Penn State, was at the OTC with his freestyle teammates. I haven't been back here since last year this time. Um, but it's, you know, just kind of get back in the swing of things, you know. Never really stopped, you know. I've always wrestled with the college guys back at Penn State, and have uh, you know never really stopped wrestling or training and stuff. But um, it's just kind of getting in a different mindset now. One of the world's best heavyweights, world medalist and Olympian Travel Delegnev, is looking forward to getting back to action. It's kind of that time where I need to be smart with my body, and you know, just just not be not be OCD with with put, with you know pushing past things. And uh, so I feel I feel really good. I feel excited. I feel. Mentally refreshed, uh, excited to compete. Chris Pendleton is a coach at Wyoming, is one of the nation's best at 211, and he's preparing for the year ahead. I've been working out uh, up at the University of Wyoming where I coach and helping the college guys. Uh, you know, I was on the mat pretty much um, the entire summer and uh, beginning of the fall I took a little bit of a break. In December I started kind of getting back in the swing of things, getting ready for competition. Frank the Tank Molinero, man, how do you say perfection? He was an NCAA champ for Penn State. He had a busy season on the mats this fall, and now he's looking to make an impact internationally. Uh, just trying to get the most experience I can until we go overseas, and you know I'm really looking forward to that trip to get the most out of that and really continue to build my technique and, and get a feel for freestyle. Raymond Jordan made a comeback to the international scene earlier this year. He was in training camp, fine-tuning his skills. I'm wrestling with the freestyle guys. I haven't seen a lot of these guys in a long time, so it's good to get on the mat, get the different feels and looks. And then uh, I'm also wrestling with some of the Greco guys as well, so it's a whole different type of wrestling, different type of style, and they complement each other, so it's going really well. Among those at the camp, several young athletes who have finished their collegiate careers and are now pursuing their Olympic dreams. Matt McDonough won two NCAA titles for Iowa and has high goals for his freestyle career. It's a lot of the same and a lot of new. Um, the, the concepts are the same. You, you score points, you win. But there's some specific technical things, and um, you know, learning a learning curve. I think to to doing it that is that you you have to you have to overcome to be successful at that level. Jason Welch, who was an All-American at Northwestern, recently decided to pursue his Olympic dreams as well. It was good to be back. Uh, definitely getting back in shape is, is a tough one, but. Uh, I think give me a couple more weeks, I'll be feeling really good. I'm still doing grad school and doing the things I, you know, want to do right now in my life. So um, I think it can fit training into into my life. In the coming weeks, we'll have more interviews from America's best wrestlers who look to represent the U.S. at international tournaments throughout the winter. Well, this week the Jack Pinnow Cup in Greco-Roman returns to the Springs and USA Wrestling made a major announcement pertaining to the competition. And as you may know, the event is named in loving memory of six-year-old wrestler Jack Pinnow, who was killed in the tragic shooting in Newtown, Connecticut Elementary School. In honor of Jack, the USA Wrestling will support and promote a youth sports initiative called Jack Pinnow, Getting Kids in the Game. It'll benefit the nonprofit organization Kids in the Game, a charity selected by Jack's parents, Dean and Tricia, in memory of their son. Well, the program is dedicated to providing underprivileged children across the country with the resources they need to get in the game and thrive in life through athletic competition. Jack's parents explain why they got involved. There's plenty of people out there that, uh, that do good things. 
And that's uh, you know when we started looking for organizations and ultimately found Kids in the Game and immediately knew this was the right fit for us and the right way to honor Jack's life and his, uh, his love of sports. Jack's father, Dean, and his brother, Ben, will be guests of USA Wrestling at this year's Pinno Cup, along with Kids in the Game Executive Director, Natalie Hummel. USA Wrestling also announced this last week that the lineups for the foreign Greco-Roman teams who will be in competition at the event. Leading the Kazakhstan team is world bronze medalist Almat Kabuspiev at 143 and Asian silver medalist Yurlin Iskiyev at 207. India will be led by world bronze medalist Yara Sandiev at 156. In China, well, a pair of Asian silver medalists will be there, Dai Zhao at 207 and Kui Meng at 286. Or well, USA Wrestling will be providing the webcast of these two important events, themat.com. This weekend, with all eight rounds of the Pinot Cup broadcasted live from the OTC. In addition, the semifinals and finals of the Colorado Springs Metro Wrestling Championships, the City High School Tournament for the Pikes Peak region, will also be streamed live via webcast. USA Wrestling has organized this event for 14 years now as a service to the local wrestling community. Be sure to check out both live wrestling broadcasts on Saturday, January 25th. USA Wrestling continues right after this. has been there. They've been the lifeblood of, uh, of the sport. Uh, it's been a long time and they've been at the top of the game every year forever. And I'll tell you what, now that I think about it, maybe that's where I've gotten my inspiration because uh, you know, I, I always want to be in the top of my game in wrestling and I think that's where ASICS is and wants to be as well. Hi, I'm Wayne Boyd, Director of Operations and Development for Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. The club was founded to help wrestling worldwide, especially at our senior level, of course at the collegiate level, and the high school level. But the most important level for Titan Mercury Wrestling Club is the kids level. And these are some of the guys today that will be tomorrow's Olympic champions. Let's hear it, guys. Titan Mercury! That's Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, San Marino, California. Well, three American freestyle wrestlers traveled north to Canada just last weekend to compete in the Guelph Open, and all three came home with medals. We're able to get some great finals video from our friends at 49northwrestling.com, the top wrestling website in Canada. While well, competing in men's freestyle at 125, former Kent State All-American Danny Mitchiff. He's now at the Northeast Ohio Regional Training Center in Cleveland. Well, Mitchiff went 4-0 in the tournament, getting tech balls in every bout while outscoring his opponents some 46-3. Then he hammered Canada's Scott Schiller in the finals 12 to 1. We go to the women's side. New York native Carlene Slaverski competed at 116. She attends college in Canada and competes for Brock University. She also had a perfect 4 0 record at the event with a pin over Brock teammate Diana Weicker in the finals. The other U.S. medalist was in the men's draw at 89. That's where former NAI finalist Enoch Francois finished with an impressive 5 1 record. The assistant coach at Army defeated Canada's Nick Proctor in the bronze medal round. Well, it was a crazy week for sure in the D1 college ranks as a number of highly ranked teams fell victim to defeat and some of the biggest stars suffered unexpected losses as well. We'll start in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It was Michigan USA Wrestling Day, a special promotion organized by the University of Michigan for their duel against the Big Ten rival Minnesota. Coming into the meet, Minnesota was ranked number two in the country. Michigan, well, they sat at 19th. In front of a packed house, the two teams split the first two bouts, and the duel was tied three all. Then the Wolverines went on a run, taking four straight in the middleweights, two of which were upsets. At 49, 12th ranked 
Eric Grahalis of Michigan stopped the number two rank Nick Dardane, 6'4". Then 15th ranked Brian Murphy edged out the number eight ranked Dylan Ness, 5'3", at 157. Well, Minnesota put a run of their own together in the upper weights with victories from nationally ranked stars Logan Storley at 174, Kevin Steinhaus at 84, and Scott Schiller at 197. Both teams had a chance to win going into the final bout, but that's where undefeated true freshman Adam Kuhn of Michigan took to the mats, and he also took on two-time defending NCAA champ Tony Nelson of Minnesota. It was the bout that everybody had waited for. The two athletes traded escapes in regulation and the first tiebreaker, neither riding for longer than 10 seconds. Kuhn scored his winning takedown off a counter in the second sudden victory frame to claim the bout. And the final score was 4-2. His record is now an amazing 23-0, and Kuhn's win gave Michigan a 1914 upset victory. I've had an atmosphere behind me, that, but not nearly as loud, not nearly as condensed as this crowd. So this is definitely, definitely something new and something I'm loving. It's a big match for me, um, one of the toughest matches I've had all season. Um, you know, and I knew that uh, it was a pivotal, pivotal point, not for uh, just my season, but for uh, our team is in the duel. What a, what a great way to end a great duel, huh? Uh, you know, in front of our home crowd, a packed house, and so it was exciting for, for, uh, for college wrestling and exciting for Michigan wrestling. Nelson's, uh, one of his biggest strengths is riding, you know, and Adam, right away he wanted to go down, he got away right away, you know, and he's, he's confident, he's comfortable in every position. Now let's head to Norman, Oklahoma, where fourth-ranked Oklahoma played host to the ninth-ranked Northern Iowa Panthers. Both teams had undefeated records entering into the event. Doug Schwab's Panthers jumped to an early 12-0 lead, winning the first three bouts. Two were minor upsets as the seventh-ranked Dylan Peters beat number five Gerard Patterson at 125, and the number 15 Joey Lazer stopped number 10 Nick Lester by pin at 141. Well, OU won the next two bouts, including a major decision from NCAA champ Kendrick Maple at 49. Well, the team's traded wins over the next four with Sooners Andrew Howe at 74 and Travis Rutt at 197 earning wins, and the Panthers Cooper Moore at 65 and Ryan Loader at 84 earning Ws for their bouts. Loader scored a clutch major over Danny Chade. We go to the heavyweight bout. Now, that's where Oklahoma needed a pin for the team win, but when Sooner Ross Larson won by decision only, it was not enough, and you and I came home with a 1917 upset. Let's go back east. That's where the 13-ranked Panthers of Pittsburgh welcomed the 5th-ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. Once again, the bout came down to the heavyweights in Oklahoma State. Well, how'd they open? With wins at 25 and 33. Pitt responded, though, with two wins of their own, both upsets. At 141, Edgar Bright beat 11th ranked Anthony Kalik at 10 5. Then at 149, Mike Rossiato pinned 7th ranked Josh Kindig at a minute 37. Oklahoma State stars Alex Erringer at 57 and Tyler Caldwell at 65 were joined by NCAA champ Chris Perry at 74, who all reeled off wins. But the Panthers, well, they controlled the upper weights. Wins by Max Thomasette at 184 and Nick Bonacorsi at 197 brought it all down to the heavyweight bout. That's where. Pitt's P.J. Tazard took 16th rank Austin Marsden into overtime, and he scored winning two points for a 3-1 victory. Well, that tied the duel at 18-18. So how does Pitt win it? Well, the tie-breaking point was based on Rosario's pin at 49. With a string of upsets, the Division I rankings changed drastically. Penn State remained at number one while Iowa jumped up two into the two spot. Cornell moved up to number three and Minnesota dropped down to number four. With their big win over Oklahoma, Northern Iowa climbed into the five spot. It should be a wild year at the NCAAs this March in Oklahoma. Good luck if you can get tickets. We'll see you there. More news on the international and collegiate front when we return. Stay tuned. and Liberty Mutual's Responsible Sports Community Grant Program awards $65,000 to youth sports organizations and school sports programs that demonstrate their commitment to responsibility in youth sports. Your organization could be one of our 20 winners this season. 
It's easy. Simply visit ResponsibleSports.com and click on the Community Grant Program. Administrators register their organization with the program, then reach out to rally parents, coaches, and team supporters to log on and review either the Responsible Sports Parenting or Responsible Coaching Guide. Then complete the quiz and showcase your mastery of the concepts. Every successfully passed quiz is worth a point that you can credit to your favorite youth sports organization or school sports program. Connect with friends, family, and neighbors to rally more support. The teams and schools with the most points at the end of the grant period win. It's that simple. Watch the leaderboard throughout the grant season, then rally more of your supporters to increase your totals. Liberty Mutual is committed to celebrating and championing youth sports and to financially supporting organizations that demonstrate their commitment to responsible sports. Join the movement and start earning points toward your community grant. Well, the weekend of upsets was not just about the team scores. There were some individual bouts that were sure to impact the rankings as well. We talked earlier about the defeat of returning NCAA heavyweight champ Tony Nelson of Minnesota. So now let's head to Lincoln, Nebraska. That's where the number three Iowa took on the eighth-ranked Corn Huskers of Nebraska. It was a good night for the Hawkeyes. They won 7 of 10 for the 22-9 victory, but the biggest match of the day did not go in Iowa's favor. Two undefeated wrestlers met at 157 pounds. Returning NCAA champ Derek St. John of Iowa battled All-American James Green of Nebraska. Green had a previous win over St. John just last season. He struck first with a takedown in the opening period. St. John started the second period in the down position and earned an escape, but Green managed a second takedown for a 4-2 lead. In the third, Green escaped to extend his lead to 5-2 and then added another takedown in the third period for a 9-7 victory over the top-ranked wrestler in the country. Among Iowa's six wins, victories for Tony Ramos at 33, Nick Moore at 65, and Big Bobby Telford at heavyweight. With the loss from St. John, all seven returning NCAA champs have suffered at least one loss this year. Count them up. Jesse Delgado of Illinois, 25. Logan Stever of Ohio State at 41. Kendrick Maple of Oklahoma at 49. Derek St. John of Iowa at 65. Chris Perry of Oklahoma State at 74. Ed Ruth of Penn State at 84. And Tony Nelson of Minnesota at 285. So, all returning champs have now tasted defeat. And we're only in January. What a wild season so far. In Division One. Well, big time college duel meets continue this week. Iowa hosts fourth ranked Minnesota in Iowa City. Iowa fans are surely looking to sell out Carver Hawkeye and perhaps beat the NCAA dual meet attendance record that was set by Penn State in December. You can expect a very close battle, a lot of drama, as Hawkeye coach Tom Brands and Gopher coach Jay Robinson will go head to head. Returning NCAA champ Tony Ramos shared his thoughts. We need to see that. You know, they're, they are vulnerable, they're all, their guys aren't invincible, um, like Nelson, like, you know, Steinhaus or Ness or Dardane's, the good guys they got. So, you know, they need to realize that, um, the guys on the team, and go out there and make a statement. Hawkeye coach Tom Brands. I think there's a similar coaching style. I think it's physical and hustle and attitude and toughness. I think their coaching staff is about toughness. I think Jay Robinson's been about toughness his whole life. Well, this weekend will also be the busiest of the women's collegiate season as the WCWA Women's College National Championships are set for Missouri Baptist University in St. Louis Friday and Saturday. King University comes into the Nationals ranked number one after an unbeaten dual meet season and some strong performances in tournament action. The Tornado won the NWCA National Duels a few weeks ago and have a ton of momentum going into the Nationals. Top stars on King's roster, 2013 U.S. Senior World Team member Allie Reagan, a defending WCWA champ and ranked number one at 130 pounds. Reagan joined us recently on USA Wrestling's most recent Google Plus Hangout. Um, well, without King, I don't, I don't think, think I would have made the senior, senior world team. team. Um, um, I definitely, I've definitely have grown, grown as a wrestler, wrestler since I've been a king. king. From a freshman to now, it's, it's just such a jump, jump in uh, my level, level of competition, competition as, as well as my, as my mental, mental game. game. Three other Tornadoes hold number one rankings as well. Haley Aguello at 116, Sarah Hildebrand at 123, and Julia Salata at 155. We talked with Coach Borman about his team on the hangout. 
we have the same expectations that we do as the men's team as far as training and uh, work ethic and all those. And um, I, I think we run it very similar to our, our men's side. While well, returning WCWA national champ Simon Fraser of Canada hopes to repeat as champs as they have four returning national champs on their roster. Simon Fraser lost by only two points in the final match of the NWCA national duels. Looking to win a record fourth career WCWA nationals title, two stars of the clans team, Victoria Anthony at 109 and Helen Maroulis at 130 pounds. Both were members of the U.S. Senior World Team last summer and have numerous international honors to their credit. Also looking to repeat as national champs, top-ranked Justina D'Astasio at 170 and Jenna McClatchy at 191. Oklahoma City finished second at nationals last year and has won four WCWA national team titles as well. And the Stars are more than motivated to return to the top. Coming in with a number one ranking is defending national champ Evelyn Webster at 101. Well, stars also have second-ranked Christy Garr at 109 and Rachel McFarland at 130. Women's college wrestling keeps growing, and there will be some new teams in the field this year, and the coaches expect great competition in all 10 weights. Fans can watch the action at home, thanks to Missouri Baptist, who will be providing a live web stream from the event. Be sure to check it out at the address on your screen, and look for a full report on next week's episode of USA Wrestling Weekly. We're going to stack you up and take you down when we return. You're watching USA Wrestling Weekly. There comes a point in your life that determines who you are, whether you will lead or follow, whether you will fight or give in, whether you will win or lose. And what you will count as your victory. Well, USA Wrestling has continued to host more Google Plus Hangouts with some of the top college programs in this last week. Well, the University of Maryland Terrapins were the featured guests. Terps head coach Kerry McCoy, who's being inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame this year, talked about his team. This season's been a little up and down. Um, we've had some some individual successes. Jimmy and, and Christian Bowley and Spencer Myers is doing a great job. Jimmy winning Midlands. Christian Bowley winning Midlands. Uh, Spencer made it to the semifinals and then you know, got a little injury we had to be careful about. But, uh, you know, we've had some individual successes. Jimmy's currently ranked number one in the country, and, and uh, Spencer and Christian Bowley are, are nationally ranked top ten. So it's a pretty good position to be in. McCoy brought two of his All-Americans to the hangout. Jimmy Sheptock, who won a Midlands title and is currently ranked number one at 84, joined the conversation. Uh, it's definitely been really exciting um, going in Midlands, getting the, getting the championship there. I was really... Uh, Really proud of that. My family, my whole family was there from Chicago, so I was able to uh, put on a good showcase for them. Heavyweight Spencer Myers, who redshirted last year and was an All-American as a freshman, looks to make his way to the podium again this year. Uh, you know, not many uh, true freshmen coming in All-American or doing anything like that, so I, I hope that it shows uh, incoming freshmen and guys coming up in the ranks at Maryland that uh, anything can be done. You can watch an exciting replay of the Google Plus Hangout by visiting USA Wrestling's YouTube channel. And be sure to check out themat.com to find out about future hangouts that will be taking place in the coming weeks. Well, some big wrestling news out of India. The Wrestling Federation of India, along with the sponsor Solutions Limited, will start a new professional league for Olympic wrestlers called the Indian Wrestling League. Wrestling is now very popular in India, and their teams have done very well on the international circuit, as you may have noticed. Among the top men's freestyle stars from India are world champs and Olympic medalist Sushil Kumar and Olympic medalist Yogeshwar Dutt. India's women's team is also very competitive. The federation claims that this will be the richest league in the world, with franchises from six different cities in the country and about $3.5 million up for grabs. Competition will be held for both men and women using the three Olympic styles with all competitors being broadcast on national television throughout the country. There are similar leagues like this in Germany and Iran and supporters of wrestling in India are hoping to establish their new league and help better promote the sport of wrestling worldwide. We're going to wish them good luck in their brand new venture. 
Hey, it's time for our USA Wrestling Photo of the Week contest. The pictures are coming in from across the country from families and fans and are also being considered for our photo contest page on our USA Wrestler Magazine and our Facebook page. This week's Photo of the Week taken by Kimberly Malone with this photo of Gabe Jacobs of North Oldham, Kentucky scoring a pin with a stack at 86 pounds at the Oldham County Varsity Duels. Hey, you can have your photographs considered simply by emailing them to Gary Abbott and G. Abbott at usawrestling.org. Folks, that'll do it for this week's program. From all of us here at USA Wrestling, I'm Scott Casper, and thanks for watching.